Now's a great time to meet two new UI View subclasses, UI Toolbar and UI Progress View. UI Toolbar holds and shows a collection of UI bar button item objects that the user can tap on. We already saw how each view controller has a right bar button item in its navigation item. So a UI Toolbar is like having a whole bar of those items. UI Progress View is a colored bar that shows how far a task is through its work, sometimes called a progress bar. The way we're going to use UI Toolbar is quite simple. All view controllers automatically come with a toolbar items array that gets read in when the view controller is active inside a navigation controller. This is very similar to the way right bar button item is shown only when the view controller is active. All we have to do is set the array, then tell our navigation controller to show its toolbar, and it will do the rest of the work for us. We're going to create two UI bar button items, although one is special because it's a flexible space. This is a unique UI bar button item type that acts like a spring, pushing other buttons to one side until all the space is used. So, over in Xcode, in view did load, I'm going to add some new code directly below where we set right bar button item. I'm going to say, let spacer equals a UI bar button item, with the system item being dot flexible space, target nil, action nil. And then let refresh equals another UI bar button item, again a system item, with a system item dot refresh, target being our web view, and action being hash selector, web view dot reload. Then we'll assign both of those two to our view controller's toolbar items property as an array of spacer then refresh, and then say our navigation controller question mark dot is toolbar hidden equals false. So this first line here is new, or at least part of it is. We're creating a new UI bar button item using a special system item called dot flexible space, which creates a flexible space. It doesn't need a target or an action because it can't be tapped. This second line though, you've mostly seen before, although now it's calling the reload method of our web view, rather than using a method of our own. That will reload the web view in place. The last two lines are new. This first one creates an array containing our flexible space and the refresh button, then sets it to be our UI view controller's toolbar items array. This thing comes from the parent class UI view controller, just like title and navigation controller and navigation item the second line sets navigation controller's is toolbar hidden property to be false, so the toolbar will be shown, and its items will be loaded from our current view. This code will of course compile and run, so press Command R to build it now, put it in the simulator and give it a try. And all being well, we should see, there we go on the bottom right here, our little refresh icon looking nice right there. You'll see it's aligned to the right, and that's the effect of the flexible space automatically taking up as much space as it can on the left. The next step is going to be to add a UI progress view to our toolbar, which will show how far the page is through loading. However, this requires two new pieces of information. First, you can't just add random UI view subclasses to a UI toolbar, or to the right bar button item property. Instead, you have to wrap them in a special UI bar button item, and use that instead. And second, Although web views tell us how much the page is loaded using its estimated progress property, the navigation delegate system doesn't tell us when this value is changed. So we're going to ask iOS to tell us using a powerful technique called key value observing, or KVO. First, let's create the progress view and place it inside the bar button item. We're going to start with a new property. Up here we'll say blah web view, var a progress view, is a UI progress view implicitly unwrapped. Then, with our other two buttons here, we're going to say progress view is equal to a UI progress view with initializer progress view style dot default. Then progress view dot size to fit and let progress button equals a UI bar button item this time with a custom view being our progress view. Now all three of those lines are new, 
So let's go over them. This first line creates a new UI progress view instance, giving it the default style. There's an alternative style called dot bar, which does not draw an unfilled line to show the extent of the progress view. But the default style looks best here. Try them both and see which you prefer. This second line tells the progress view to set its layout size so it fits its contents fully. So it'll take up as much space as it needs to show the full progress view. And this last line creates a new UI bar button item using the custom view initializer, which is where we wrap up our progress view in a bar button item so it can go into our toolbar. With the new progress button item created, we can put it into our toolbar items anywhere we want it. The existing spacer will automatically make itself smaller to give space to the progress button. So I'm gonna modify my toolbar items array like this. I'm gonna say progress button, then spacer, then refresh, putting our progress button item first. If you're on the app now, we should see a really thin gray line for our progress view. Let's have a look. This thing down here, that's our progress view. That's because its default value is zero, so there's nothing colored in. Ideally, we want to set this to match our web view's estimated progress value, which is the number from zero to one, telling us how much of the page has loaded. But Navigation Delegate doesn't tell us when this value has changed. Apple's solution to this is huge. Apple's solution is powerful. And best of all, Apple's solution is almost everywhere in its toolkits. So once you learn how it works, you can apply it elsewhere. It's called Key Value Observing, KVO. And it effectively lets you say, please tell me when the property X of object Y gets changed by anyone at any time. We're going to use KVO to watch the estimated progress property. I hope you'll agree it's useful. First, we add ourselves as an observer of that property on the web view by going back into view did load and saying somewhere before we load the URL, web view dot add observer. For the first parameter, we'll say self. For the for key path parameter, we'll say hash key path wk web view dot estimated progress. For options, we're going to say dot new and context will say nil. So that whole line of code is new. The add observer method takes four parameters. Who the observer is, we're the observer, so we use self. What property we want to observe, in our case that is wkwebview.estimatedprogress. Which value we want, in our case we want the new value that was just set, and a context value for which we're providing nil. For key path and context bear a little bit more explanation. For key path isn't named for property because it's not just about entering a property name. You can actually specify a path if you want to, one property inside another, inside another, and so on. More advanced key paths can even add functionality like averaging all elements in an array. Swift has a special keyword here, hash key path, which works like the hash selector keyword you saw previously. It allows the compiler to check your code's correct. That the WK WebView class actually has an estimated progress property. Context is easier. If you provide a unique value, that same context value gets sent back to you when you get your notification that the value has changed. This allows you to check the context to make sure it was your observer that was called. There are some corner cases where specifying and checking your context is required to avoid bugs, but you won't reach them during any of this series. A big warning though, in more complex applications, all calls to add observer should be matched with a call to remove observer when you're finished observing, for example, when you're done with the view controller. Once you've registered as an observer using KVO, you must implement a method called observe value. This tells you when observe value has changed. So, I'll find some space and add this method, observe value. As you can see, it's telling us which key path changed here in this key path string, as well as the context we passed in earlier when we added our observer. 
In this project, all we care about is whether the key path parameter is set to estimated progress. So we'll say in here, if key path is equal to estimated progress, and then we'll update our progress views progress value to be the web views estimated progress. We'll say progress view dot progress is equal to the float version of web view dot estimated progress. And the reason for this typecast here is because estimated progress is provided as a double and progress is a float. Slightly different types of data. If you remember, floats hold less data. They are a lower precision way of storing numbers than doubles. So Swift won't let you put a double into a float because you're clearly losing data. And that's why we have this float conversion right here. If you're on the project now, we should see our progress bar fill up with blue as the page loads. Watch the bottom left corner. There it is. See it loading? Let's try apple.com. Starts low, builds up, boom, it loads. 